Cavs just won Game 7. I'm happy about that. I mean, I just feel like the Warriors are way too overhyped, and I wanted to see them get taken down. I've always been a fan of LeBron. I actually didn't watch a single game, though. I watched like the last six minutes of Game 7, and that, that's it. That's the entire finals that I watched. I don't know why. Playoffs just aren't exciting unless a team that I want is playing. Um, I, <laughs> I watched the first four games of the Thunder vs. Warriors, and then after that I was like, if they don't finish him off, then I, I don't want to be there to watch him lose. And so I skipped the last three games. Right. Honestly, once the Spurs lose, I pretty much lose all interest in the NBA. So... Greetings and welcome to The Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Lyle and this is WNBA Weekly, the show where twice a week, usually on Mondays and Fridays, I will talk about things that happened recently in the association and things I'm looking forward to in the coming days. This was a very exciting weekend that left me with plenty to talk about. First of all, on Saturday you had three games being played. Elena Deladon streaked through on 26 points, including the shot that forced overtime. And the, But the Dream, they went on an 8-0 run to finish out the overtime period, and they end up coming away with the win. Meanwhile, the Stars, Kayla McBride is 21, Tamika Catchings is 23. The Fever control the fourth quarter in order to come away with the win. And then you have the Los Angeles Sparks. Candace Parker has a huge double-double as LA is able to beat the Mercury, and they tie Minnesota's record at 11 straight wins to start the season. Then on Saturday, you have a doubleheader on NBA TV. You've got the Dream playing the second night in a row, and they just get completely shut down. The Washington Mystics go on to win by 30 points. And then you also have the Mercury on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, and they went into triple overtime, so double whammy. They were so tired by the end of the game. They had three players foul out. Duana Bonner put, led the team with 38 points. But the Dallas Wings, they look like they're getting back to form. You know, they look like they're getting into the same championship shape that I predicted they would be in at the end of the season. Chloe Johnson has a double-double. Skylar Diggins has a season-high 27 points. Dallas ends up grabbing the win. Then on Sunday, we finish off the week. You got the Stars versus the Sun. You know, Kelsey Bones, she has 29 points. Jasmine Thomas nearly has a triple-double. Connecticut's able to win by just three points. Then you have the Liberty versus the Fever. Liberty came back from a late deficit in order to force overtime and grab the win. And then you also have, of course, the Storm versus the Lynx. You know, history on the line. And, you know, Minnesota Legends going get it. Brianna Stewart at 21. Maya Moore at 18. And Minnesota is able to extend their streak, setting once again a new record for the most wins to start a season at 12-0. So after all that excitement, here are your current standings. So this weekend was exciting not only because the games were fun to watch, so many of them coming down to the last possession, people winning by a single shot, so many overtimes being played, but also because of the standings and how people got shuffled and that and how that affects you know the importance of this these next games that are coming over the next six days. Also interesting fact, for those of you who don't know, the playoffs have been changed. There's a new format that the, the eight best teams get in regardless of conference. So under last year's rules, if the playoffs started right now, the Mercury would be in and the Fever would not. But under the current rules right now, the Mercury are out and the Fever are in. So now every win and every loss, it counts so much more than it did before. Also, Skylar Diggins, Glory Johnson, they're back and they're playing as well as you'd expected. And I still don't think either of them is quite at 100% yet. I'd say they're somewhere in the 80s right now. So let's see how good this team can play once they get up to full speed and the chem not only are their best players playing their best, but the chemistry between the team has improved greatly. And I think they'll be able to take down some of the top teams. They'll be able to really challenge Minnesota and LA. Also, New York has gotten on, gone on a long winning streak. They've gotten strong again and they've risen right back up into the top. And Phoenix, surprisingly, still struggling. 
they had a bit of a winning streak going, and it's been erased now, and they're still five, just a couple losses away from the bottom. So with all of that out of the way, let's get to the games that are being played this week, and trust me, it is going to be huge. I will mention all of the games that are currently scheduled to air nationally, which means everyone in the U.S. can watch them. And so for everything else, you can always check your local listings or watch every single game on WNBA League Pass. And don't forget the times I'm telling you up Eastern Standard Time, so make sure to adjust for your time zone. We get started with the game that I've been waiting for basically since opening tip-off week one. You've got the Lynx versus the Sparks, two undefeated teams, both of them chasing history. Whoever wins this game will be the only undefeated team left in the league and in sole possession of that number one spot. The Lynx are hoping to continue uh, expanding their hold on history, making it harder for other teams to catch up to them, trying to get that 13th win. But Sparks are looking to tie the Lynx current record and then maybe extend it after that. And then the next two games are going to be on at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. One of them on ESPN2, one of them on ESPN3. You've got the Stars at the Sky Sky. They've been struggling recently. They've dropped off a bit thanks to a, bit of a, thanks to a losing streak. And then you've also got the Mercury at the Wings. Wings look like they're getting to form, including a very tough win over this Mercury team in what was a very exciting game on Saturday. And meanwhile, Phoenix, like, I'm st still trying to figure it out with them. Then on Wednesday, you've got the Liberty at the Dream. That one's at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which means it's a morning game for most people in the U.S. And... The this, t this game, I mean, just like on Tuesday, you had the two best teams in the Western Conference battling for that number one spot in the league, and now you've got the two best Eastern Conference teams who currently have a tie record battling for control over the third seed. Then you've also got the Fever at the Mystics at 7. Mystics looking to get back to 500. And then you finish off the week on Thursday with the Stars at the Wings at 8.30 p.m. So that's it for this edition of WNBA Weekly. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, comment, all the good shit. And until the next episode will be up on Friday. So until then, this has been The Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lyle, and I hope you have a good week.